Now, I have a lot of old computers. I think it's kind of interesting to find out what an old computer can do in 2023, and I've always found it interesting. So one day I took an old laptop out from under my bed, which still ran Windows XP, and my goal was to get it up to Windows 10. So this is the specs of the laptop. So the laptop only had 256 megabytes of RAM. Judging by the minimum system requirements of Windows Vista, that laptop could only go up to Windows XP because Windows Vista required 512 megabytes of RAM. But there is a way around it. By running the Gnosis check command in command prompt, you can actually run the Windows Vista setup without having the setup check your system specs. And that's basically the easiest way to get Windows Vista on 256 megs of RAM. And that was actually completely successful. The audio worked and everything. Now to upgrade that laptop from Windows Vista to Windows 7, I basically had to download a free hex editor onto my other computer. And then you gotta find the winsetup.dll file and then open it in the hex editor. And find this hex code and change it to this hex code, which I guess lowers the RAM requirements to lower than 512 megabytes of RAM. Now I tried it multiple times within the span of a couple of weeks. After trying it really, really hard, I finally got that laptop to Windows 7 with 256 megs of RAM. Now there were two ways to bypass the Windows 8 system requirements. And the first way, was to go into the Windows 8 setup files and delete install prep which is basically the piece of software that shows up before the installation of Windows 8 that checks your computer and makes sure that it's compatible with Windows 8. Another way was to replace the install.wim file in the Windows Vista setup files and replace that with the install.wim in the Windows 8 setup files. Neither of which worked for me because I would constantly get errors even after my computer has been upgraded from 256 to one gigabyte, which is a problem. But I wasn't done yet. I wanted to install the latest version of Windows on every single old computer that I could find in the house. So my stepdad downstairs actually has a Dell Optiplex GX280 that he was willing to give to me because, you know, he wasn't using it. So I took it upstairs and I plugged it in and uh, this happened. Okay, so I just turned this thing on and I don't know what's going on. Why is it so loud? I could not, for the life of me, fix that Dell Optiplex GX280. And the reason is because, well, the motherboard is actually dead on it. And it's actually a very common problem with that specific model of that computer. But oh no, I wasn't done yet. There was another computer in the garage, and my uncle actually gave that to me back in 2017. But I never actually used it, so it just ended up in the garage for a couple of years. Until now. And that computer was the Dell Dimension 8300, which is actually older than the Dell Optiplex GX280. But I went into the backyard with it, brought out the VGA monitor, brought out the keyboard and mouse, and so I got the two Dell computers right here actually is working right now and I'm installing Windows Vista on it currently so yeah it freaking worked how in the heck does that even happen a computer that's been downstairs for a couple of years that's been getting use that's dead but a computer that's been in the garage for a couple of years that's still working how the heck is that even possible and these are the specs of that computer which is not good but it's good enough so that i could actually experiment with it and stuff so long story short i've actually installed multiple operating systems because i've kind of wanted to be able to use that as sort of like an actually working computer that you can use nowadays but i ended up installing a 32-bit version of windows vista ultimate on it and i had an idea that popped into my head that was like i want to make a video on this computer i want to try and edit a video like edit like a two minute video on this computer and see how it is. So it's basically trial and error with the software that I wanted to put on this computer. But the software that I ended up putting on that computer was Sony Vegas Pro 8.0, which came with this uh, Sony camera here. And this camera can only film in 480p. The video quality is actually pretty decent and it records in the MPEG format and it came out in 2007. And the video that I made on that computer is basically just explaining the capabilities and limitations of the computer, which is pretty darn interesting. So um, yeah, here's the video I made. Hey guys, so if you're wondering why the quality of this video is so low, that's because I'm editing part of this video on that computer down there. And I have to record it on an old Sony camera that records in MPEG format. Now, because this is a 32-bit computer, you're really going to be limited on what apps you can install. Since most applications in 2023 stopped supporting 32-bit architecture a long, long time ago. So for example, the Blender application, which is a 3D program, totally cut off support for the 32-bit applications back in 2019 with Blender 2. 
2.81, and Blender 2.8 was the very last version that supports a 32-bit architecture. Now the CPU is only 32 bits, which means that I won't even be able to put it on Windows 11, and because it doesn't support the SSC2 instruction set, I can't even put Windows 8 on it, so Windows 7 is the latest Windows operating system that goes onto this computer. And what's pretty mind-blowing about this computer is that it actually runs not that bad. Like, I click and then it opens almost immediately. Now if you're wondering why I put Windows Vista on this computer, it's because the graphics drivers and the audio drivers for the components that are inside this computer can only support up to Windows Vista. Now without these graphics drivers, I wouldn't have been able to get this amazing Aero-themed Windows Vista install, and I also wouldn't have been able to go up to 1080p. Now the Socket 478 was mostly Pentium CPUs, and there are only a handful of Socket 478 CPUs that actually do support Windows 10, but this CPU is not it. And this is one of the first CPUs with hypercard. So this CPU only has one core, but you can see here that Windows is seeing it as two different cores, which is pretty darn cool. And that could help speed up the video editing experience by a little bit. Now you do have to keep in mind that the type of videos that were being edited back then were not full HD videos. Because full HD was not very common at the time, and you could really only edit full HD videos back then on like really, really powerful computers. Now this computer also has a gigabyte of DDR RAM. Now a gigabyte of RAM is so small that even just a simple animation like this can really slow the computer down. And you see that? That's all the stuff that's in RAM. All this other stuff has been saved to disk, which means it's caching. And if I open the task manager, you can see that it's already taking up all of the RAM, which means that After Effects has always been a massive memory hog. Okay, well, the quality is not that good, but I mean, it's it's all right. Now, editing on that computer using Sony Vegas Pro 8 was actually not that bad. Now, sure, it wasn't the fastest experience in the world, but it could edit those 240p and even 480p videos pretty nicely, and it rendered out the video in the in just 25 minutes. If you want me to edit a full video on that old Pentium 4 computer, well, put a video idea down in the comments and I'll try and make that video on that old computer. So I really, really hope you enjoyed me just rambling on about me just tinkering about. If you loved it, please subscribe and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Bye! All right, so I made that video like two months ago and I just wanted to release it. Like that video has been sort of abandoned for way too long at this point. So, you know, I just figured it's about time that I released the video right before my California vacation, and uh, yeah.